Hi, so this is a DC permanent magnet motor rated at 230 volts that I took out of a lathe. The lathe control board had burnt out and it left the motor, and the motor is actually still in pretty good rear uh, nick, really. Now remember, as, as far as electrical machines go, a motor and a generator are identical. They're identical in, the in their construction, we just run them in a different way. So if I put an electrical power into here, what it'll do obviously is turn that shaft, and it'll turn that shaft with a certain amount of power. Now equally, if I put power into turning that shaft, and that power source can be from anywhere, legs, arms, water, wind, doesn't matter, so whatever power source I put into turning that shaft will generate back out of it. So they're completely the same. And you can deal with them that way, and you can look at these things in terms of their motor ratings and get some idea of how it's going to perform and what you need to do in order to make it a pretty decent generator. Now this particular motor is a 150 watt motor at 230 volts DC. What that means is it takes about 0.6 of an amp. So if I put 230 volts, 0.6 of an amp in here, what I'll get is a 150 watt motor with the turning force on there. Now, the turning force is actually quite easy to calculate. It's just the power in watts multiplied by 9.55 divided by the RPM. This RPM rating is 4000 RPM because, again, 230 volts, 0.6 of an amp, it will turn at 4000 RPM. It's designed to do that, so we know an awful lot of information about it just by looking at the plate because it says all of that stuff right there on the plate. Usually, if you have a motor, you can actually look up the motor specifications, and those are the specifications that you want, because it tells you everything you need to know about how this motor is going to perform. Now, when this motor was wound, it was wound with a gauge of wire, because it's a physical thing. We can only get so much wire in there. The thicker the gauge, the more amps it can cope with. The thinner the gauge, the less amps it can cope with, but the more volts that we can put in there. So there's a trade-off that goes on. Now, on these high voltage motors, and 230 volts for a motor is pretty high, on that high voltage motor, this coil in here will be relatively thin, and so it can't handle a great deal of amps. So if I try to bang more amps in there, and I would do that by upping the voltage, then I will burn out the coil. So there's a, a physical limit in terms of its construction of how much I can put in here to get it to turn, because that turning then creates the turning force or the torque that we can get out of this motor. So those physical limits matter when it comes to looking at the opposite way. Because in the opposite way, remember, we're going to put a turning force on there and hope it's going to generate. Now the question is, how much will it generate? Well, these things have a volt per revolution associated with them. So this turns at 4000 RPM, meaning that for about every 17.4 RPM, we get one volt out of it. Every time we increase that RPM by 17.4 RPM, we'll increase it by a volt. So I can turn this by hand around about 80 RPM or so, then I'll get five volts out of it. Now it takes me a certain amount of effort. I'm putting a certain amount of torque turning force in there to do that, and that's what we'll generate. Now if I want to turn that at 4,000 RPM, clearly I need some gearing system that's going to go with it. Now remember, with gearing you trade off torque against speed. So the higher the speed, then the more torque we're going to have to put in there. So I can turn physically with my hand around about 80 times or so per minute. If I put a handle on there and gear that so that I can get 4,000 here, but 80 here, where I'm actually handling it and actually turning it, I'll need a turning force of 150 watts. Now, I don't have that in my arms. I've got about 60 watts. So if I did that, this would be impossible for me to move because I don't have the strength to do it. But I do have the strength in my legs, so I'd have to put it on a pedal. Or I'd have to have a strong enough wind that that torque requirement at the gear chain beginning matches here for the speed, in which case we would get 150 watts out of this. Now that would be an ideal condition, of course, because we wouldn't get that. These things, at their best, are about 80% efficient. Something like this is likely to be about 75% efficient. 
So if I put 150 watts in, I'm likely to get about 112 watts here. Now remember that torque and um, power speed conversion that we just talked about can apply directly to generators as well. But it makes you think about what kind of force you're going to have to apply to the beginning of your gear chain to turn this. Now you can't turn this any faster than 4,000 RPM. Well, actually you could, you could apply more power to it, but you'll do the same thing as if you put electrical power in the motor, you'll just burn it out. So the limit that this was set when it was constructed as a motor is equal to the limit you'll get out of it when you use it as a generator. So the most you're gonna be able to generate from that is 150 watts. And the reason, because that's the most you can put into it. You're not gonna get any more out of it or you'll burn the motor. So, sorry, the generator. So that's what you want to aim for. You want to aim for about 150 watts out. And what that means is, you're gonna to have to put about 0 0.24, I think it's 0 0.24, uh, yeah, 0 0.24 Newton meters, or 0 0.18, uh, 0 0.18 pounds per foot of torque is going to have to be applied here to be able to get that to turn. Now, obviously we've got the physical limit if I can't actually turn it. When I turn it, I can feel the torque. It's not very hard, I, but I can't physically turn it to 4,000 RPM. I need a gear chain that will apply that kind of torque here, or rather that speed here, and to get that speed here through a gear chain, that would be the torque that I would need to apply at the pedal. Another way of looking at it, of course, is in terms of watts of power. Now, I know that's quite a lot to take in, so let me summarise. A generator and a motor are identical. They're the same thing electrically. So we can use the plate or the specification on a motor to tell us what it's going to generate. This motor is 230 volts and uh, 0.6 of an amp, 150 watts at 4,000 RPM. That's the specification of that motor. We can use that specification to tell us how it performs a generator. Because following that formula, watts times 9.55 divided by RPM, then we get the torque that this will generate. That means that that's the torque that we need to apply to make this generate at that rating. So it's a straightforward conversion of one to the other, and that's the whole point. Once you know those two things, then it becomes actually pretty straightforward to work out how this will perform. The rest of it is a mechanical issue. Like I say, I can't spin that. Whatever I apply to that needs to be able to spin that at 4,000 RPM. So we'd need gears. When we have gears, we know what the torque on the gear will be to get that to turn at 4,000 RPM. Anyway, I thought I would go through that quickly because there seems to be quite a lot of confusion about how to use motors and how to work motors out um, when they will be used in a situation as being a generator. Because it doesn't matter how many coils how many magnets you put in there, you can't apply the turn there, you can't apply the turning force right there, then your generator will not generate. You have to be able to turn it. You have to be able to turn it and know what power you're going to need to put in there to turn it so you can size your machine. Once you size your machine, all your little bits and pieces can actually link together. Anyway, I thought I'd fill that in because I am going to make a generator out of this, but I thought I would do that first because I thought that would be helpful for people to know. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful and not just more confusion. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.